As you research, and particularly as you get working on a thesis, you will come across all kinds of scraps of information that you need to remember. It could be everything from journal articles to newspaper clippings to images, think tank reports, be a quote somewhere that you found interesting, and you need a system to collect all that. In previous videos, I talked about various options for taking notes, everything from paper to systems like Evernote or Scrivener to using a Zettelkast and like Obsidian, but that still leaves the question of where to file PDFs and other resources that you come across. One option is to store those things just in folders on your computer, which works, but does not do much for you in terms of searchability or organization. You can also put those things in a tool like Scrivener, which is what I did when I was working on an earlier thesis in my life. And that works to a point, but it doesn't scale super well. And it doesn't give you the full benefit of having an organization system for those. If you intend to be doing this kind of work for a while, or you want to, over the course of a career or a lifetime, remember PDFs, keep track of them, manage this whole library of information, what you really want to use is a citation manager. So in this video, I'm going to introduce Zotero, which is a free open source tool that's extremely powerful and something I've used for years. This is the other part of my knowledge management system in addition to Obsidian. Obsidian is my notes. Zotero is where I store raw uh, documents. So we'll open Zotero and it looks something like this. You could think of it like iTunes for PDFs, if, particularly if you remember what iTunes used to look like um, before Apple changed everything. You've essentially got a list, I'll go to my library here, of every PDF that I've stored in my academic life going back, I don't know, five or six years when I discovered Zotero. You can create folders and you can drag one of these items into as many folders as you want, just like having a playlist. You could put the same song in multiple playlists and put the same PDF in multiple projects. Holocene, this was a project. I tend to create a folder per project, a project that I was working on a few months ago participating in a conference um, and I had to read a number of journal articles for it. So I downloaded each one and saved it here. And what you get for each entry is a bibliographic entry like this one where I can go in, I can put in all the authors, the title. Um, some of these are in better shape than others, the citation, all the things you would put in a bibliography but you also get the full PDF embedded. And if I want to read that PDF, I can just double click and there it is. When I read PDFs, my primary way of taking notes is to highlight. I have a color coded system. Different colors mean different things. Uh, yellow is a general highlight. Red is a question or an area for further research. Purple has to do with methodology. You can create whatever system works for you. Uh, some people also like to annotate by scribbling notes on, particularly if you read like on an iPad or typing notes over the top. I don't do that. I just highlight and then I use another tool to extract my highlights and import them into Obsidian. But the beauty of this is all your PDFs are in one place and you can edit them all from there. If you do a lot of research for a living, you can pay a very small amount of money every year to uh, get cloud storage through Zotero. So all of my PDFs, in addition to being on my computer, are cloud synced to Zotero, which gives me a backup if my computer ever uh, faces a technical problem and also lets me sync across computers. What you get by this is several things. You get nice organization. Um, I've gone through in some cases by country, different countries I was researching for my dissertation. I've also got topical. I've got a whole series of subfolders on war, alliances, civil war, fragmentation. You get easy searchability. I can look up Paul Staniland, an author who works in my space, and see a variety of papers he did. Um, and also we'll talk about in a future video, you can automatically generate bibliographies and automatically generate footnotes for your papers without having to hand type 
everything. Uh, that is something most students don't know, and they'd spend a lot of time hand jamming citations when a lot of that work could be done for you. Now, one of my rules when doing research is to never let a good idea slip me by. If you're reading and have a novel thought, you love some quote, or it sparks some flash of insight about how you can use this in a paper, if you don't write it down immediately, you will probably forget. At least I will. That's why having a knowledge management system is important. So I always have my Obsidian open. I also typically have Zotero open when I'm like reading online. If I'm just doing research and looking for resources, if I find something promising, even if I'm not sure I'll use it, I will try and capture it in Zotero. And Zotero makes this pretty darn easy. Um, I've logged into the Air University Library, logged into JSTOR, which is a big repository of academic research, and I searched for Jim Fearon's Rationalist Explanations for War, very influential paper on, um, on war. And I can go download PDF, I have to accept a, uh, an agreement here. Once I've accepted that agreement, I've got a Zotero plugin. There's the paper. I can push this button, choose a folder. I'll put it in uh, my to read folder and it will download this whole thing for me. There it is, uh, ready to go with the full text. Now you'll see I have two copies. That's because I already had it stored. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this new one. Um, move item to trash. Now that it's there, I could drag it into whatever folder I want, have it in multiple places. You could also do this for amazon.com. Look up Paul Stanland again, Networks of Rebellion. Good book, we'll read in 644. And I can click what's now a book icon, save to Zotero, put that in my to read, and boom. There it is, Paul Staniland, and it's imported as much information as it can find uh, automatically off the site. Now, once that's done, I can go through and I can manually edit this. And again, my rule, do it in the moment. It's easier than doing it later. I'll copy down whatever information I need, and now I'm done. Um, delete that duplicate copy. Every thing that you download gets given a unique citation key. So Jim Furon wrote a paper, Separatist Wars Partition World Order in 2004. Zotero in this case is automatically assigning a citation key of Furon Separatist 2004. If I wanna integrate an automatic citation management system with my paper, I can use that to refer to this article and then the system will load in all of those details. Um, you can do the same thing for newspaper articles uh, generally, I will hand type those myself. I can, uh, let's say I'm, I'm working on this Holocene project. Project. I want to manually add something. There's all kinds of different documents. Let's say I had a conversation with, well, I went to a presentation for one of the scholars working on this. Um, I can, you know, put Joe Smith's presentation uh, by Smith Joe and the type and date and all that give it a citation key, and now that's in there as well. Um, so it makes a very easy place to store everything you've come across in one place for all of your academic work or anything else. And over years, you build up quite a library of different topics, and again, you can start to see connections across things. And again, there's also ways to link this to Obsidian or another tool. You also, if you prefer, can add notes right in here. Um, framework for studying social complexity. All right, let's say I wanna start adding some notes. Uh, I could add my notes and just start putting all of my notes in here. And now someday when I wanna come back to this paper, all my notes are stored right alongside uh, the paper. I can see the paper, the citations, and my notes all in one place. My personal preference is to do this in Obsidian, but your preference might be to keep it here. And then when you're writing a paper, you can just copy and paste what you need. Uh, you can also tag things to make them searchable. Uh, you can add other attachments. It's a very flexible system. 
Uh, you can even share your collections with other scholars. So if you're ever you know, collaborating with others on a project, you can share the same sources uh, across your group. Uh, in another video, we'll move on to how to integrate this with uh, a system like Word for citations. But we'll end this video here.